Hi, my name is Hanko Bignese. My medicine name is Starhawk Dreamer in the Cherokee tradition. And today I would like to talk to you about the subject of angels. Um, angels have recently become all the rage since the whole New Age movement got started. And, well, as often happens within spirituality, there is not really a very good or very tight definition of what is or isn't an angel. Um, if we look at the source text, like what is angel, what does the word angel mean? Literally, it's a messenger. And the first mention of them is in the Bible, where they are messengers who make known to humans the will of God. So, the messenger from God to humans. And this is inherently their purpose in the Bible. Um, a bit later, we get into a different concept, the concept of the archangel. Uh, Ark is literally first, and, well, first angel, first messenger. And thereby, already we start to have the idea of a hierarchy, so who was the first created and who were later created, thereby implying some kind of an inferiority of the later creations. Um, if we move even further down the ages, we come to a man called Dionysus the Areopagite. Um, he was you know, asked to study demons. And uh, he wrote a book on this, a big book on demonology. And um, he classified the demons into nine realms, into nine layers of power, increasing power. And he thereby also implied that the higher demons would dominate the lower demons. The Catholic Church then said, well, as it is in hell, it must also be this way in heaven. So they used the same model and claimed that the angels are organized according to exactly the same system. So instead of nine types of demons, now we have nine types of angels. And also the higher ones dominate the lower ones. And I think that this is a very big misconception. It's a logical misconception because at the time when this was happening, uh, Europe was a feudal society. So you had the emperor, and under the emperor there was the king, under the king there was the prince, under the prince there was the duke, then you had the barons, and the barons had knights, and they had their own servants. Um, so this whole stratified society where the higher layer bestowed authority and power on those below to take care of things was also how they thought that the angels must work. So God has angels to take care of things, these angels have servant angels who take care of other things, and ultimately the ones down at the bottom do all the work. So they said angels are the lowest tier of the heavenly hierarchy. They are the ones who have to do the work because they have to manifest on the earth, and the higher tiers of the heavens, well, those are not angels, we find new names for them. And this is basically the, the big misconception, because the basic idea is hierarchy, and that the heavens are as hierarchical and as static, if you will, as our own society was. And this is completely untrue. One of the other misconceptions is also what is an angel. Um, because when a person sees a spirit which is radiating a light or a being which has wings, very quickly we make the association with an angel, like, oh, well, I saw a being of light, so therefore it is an angel. And this is also untrue. Um, so let's get to where I do think angels belong in the system. Um, if you look at layers of consciousness, uh, at the bottom layer we have basically the material world, where there are things without life force, stones, for instance, and um, their consciousness is not very complex, it's rather simple. And these are elemental forces. Slightly above that you get powers which have a life force, but not yet uh, a real consciousness, so you get into um, 
microbes. Um, and they're a little bit more complex already than a stone, but still not a very evolved consciousness. And ultimately we get to the layer where we are. We have emotions, we have even thoughts, and so therefore we are a relatively complex yeah, being. But we are also relatively unconscious of our own complexity. And if we deincarnate, if we separate from our bodies, then we become a spirit. And a spirit also has emotions, also has thoughts, it has no body, but it has a much less clouded awareness. It's not obscured by the ego. And it is in this realm of spirit where we have most of our encounters, where we see most other spirits or other creatures. And because from the human level, the spirit level is a higher level, and every higher level is always seen as light. So it doesn't matter if a spirit is, well, in our terms, good or evil or high or low, but because they come from a higher level of awareness, we tend to see them with a radiance, with a light. But as I just explained, if we leave our bodies, we also become spirits, but we're still not an angel in that sense. Um, above the, our individual spirits we have collective spirits, so the collective spirit of humanity for instance. Um, above that we have planetary spirits, so Mother Earth. And above that we have the gods and the goddesses, which are more universal, so love is not something which is only known on this planet. Neither is war only known on this planet, they're known in, on many planets and there is a deity governing this energy. And above that we get the higher elemental spirits, which are um, responsible for constructing everything. They're also known as the, as the Elohim, if you look at the Bible. So they're the spirits of earth, water, air and fire. And through the combination of these elements they create many different uh, personalities, characters, energies, archetypes. And above these we get to the layer of enlightenment. Uh, this is basically where our soul exists and our soul is not really bounded by any energy or any obscuration on this level if we do reach this level of enlightenment. But if we have to look at angels it's even one or two levels above enlightenment. Um, this is kind of a, an interesting concept because in some religions enlightenment is the final goal. Um, but there is one important attachment which still exists even on a level of enlightenment, namely our own will. We have an individuality, we have our own willpower, we can decide our own faith. If we are enlightened we can decide what connections we make or do not make if we are enlightened. So we have ultimate control from everything but ourselves. And if we surrender ourselves as well and in a way let our own desires, our own willpower dissolve into the divine will, then we come into the level of what I would call an angel. So an angel is both more and less than a human. So angels are often also called very simplistic beings. But in a way they are because Many things which we have, they don't have. They don't have a personality. They don't have emotions. They don't have willpower. They only know the will of God. So in a way, they are hampered in their understanding also of human beings. Because to them there is only one will, one voice. And they don't have to contend with all the different voices from our ego, from society, um, all our doubts, all our hopes, all our attachments. These are alien to them. Um, the other thing is because there is only one will and it is the will of God and they have 100% surrender to them, they are often very imposing in the amount of power and the amount of focus they have. So. I tend to compare meeting an angel a bit like meeting a freight train, like it's enormous mass and it is moving in a certain direction, it is on the track and it has a certain speed and 
you can't divert it from the track, you can't get it to go anywhere else. Also, you cannot stop it. If you stand on the rails, it will just run over you. And this is indeed how it is for an angel. There is no explanation. There is only obedience. There is only one thing. The will of God. So encountering an angel, as it is often also told in the Bible, is often a rather awe-inspiring and unsettling experience. Because you are confronted with an enormous power and you have no leverage on it. It does not feel pity, it does not feel remorse, it does not seem to have morality in the same way as we do. There is no arguing with it. It basically states what is the will of God and it expects utter obedience. So meeting a true angel is hardly ever a pleasant experience for the person experiencing it. So angels also find ways not to, well, in a way, crush the person they are dealing with or overwhelm them too much before they are ready. So angels tend to work through intermediaries and these are what are called the spirits of God. So in all these other levels which I have described there are, as I said, uh, um, elemental energies, uh, nature spirits, uh, spirit guides, uh, planetary spirits, deities, and of course on the enlightened level, enlightened masters. And although these spirits have not yet let go of their personality, of their own will, of their emotions, and sometimes even of their egos, they can allow themselves to be inspired by the higher will. So they listen to the messages of the Holy Spirit of angels, or at least how the will of God is passed down through the golden ladder. So the angel might tell it to an enlightened master, the enlightened master may work then with the spirit of humanity, the spirit of humanity tells it to the people of a certain nation or a certain culture, and this cultural spirit will then manifest it in the individual spirits. So, as always, some things get lost in translation and often what we do is but a poor reflection of the original will of God. But as we try to follow the will of God in this way and learn from our mistakes, our consciousness increases and fewer and fewer layers in between are needed for us to hear the will of God. So we can accept angels on higher and higher levels. So, on a very low level, you have your own personal guides who are telling you something, or you've got incarnated friends who are inspired to tell you something. If you get a little higher, you will deal with spirits of a community which are trying to guide you or to help the community. And if you go even further, you get into the more archetypal spirits who are trying to perfect a certain ideal, like perfect love, and how to manifest this on the world, or harmony with nature, and how to manifest this on the world. So this is already a higher level of inspiration, a higher level of messenger you're dealing with. And it is only when we reach a state of, or close to, enlightenment, that angels often deign to speak to us directly, because they know that they are usually misunderstood, and it is no use to tell to a person about something if they don't have the power to manifest it. So the idea of an angel speaking to you is that you should also have the ability to do what it tells you to do. But many people claim to speak to angels who are of a very different nature. And they are not so much messengers but caretakers. And this is in a way not an angel because it is not a messenger. And on all these levels, besides all the spirits who basically are there to relay the will of God, uh, there are so many spirits who are trying to do what they think is best. And the amount of spirits which are really in contact with God is unfortunately still a minority. And let me get into that so that you can understand <coughs> the four types of spirit. So we went about the first type of spirit who basically are trying to listen to the will of God by listening to 
higher beings, beings on, on a higher level of consciousness, which have a bigger and better comprehension of what is God's plan. Uh, then we have the angels, which are called luciferical angels or luciferical spirits. And um, these believe in self-improvement. So instead of just listening to the will of God and be servants, they decide, well, I have a certain capacity, a certain capability. I know there's a potential in me and I want to develop this potential. So a luciferical angel or spirit is interested in self-development, in technology, in techniques, in knowledge, um, in power, in a certain level of control. And a luciferical spirit will often look for challenges and see how it can challenge itself to be better, to be stronger, um, and thereby, by climbing in the, their level of power, their level of understanding, also come closer to God. So they have a more active attitude towards getting closer to God. Um, these luciferical angels have kind of a, a side branch which split off from their group. And these are angels who are not completely following God, but they're also not working towards their self-improvement, but rather towards the improvement of all beings. So they act out of a sense of compassion, out of a sense of harmony. So often if we talk about nature spirits or um, landscape angels, we're talking about these angels of harmony. And angels of harmony, they were at the first instance luciferical angels, so they believed in self-improvement. Then they saw that in a way focusing on themselves was wrong, because this is yeah, not the right way to follow the divine plan or not the optimal way for consciousness to develop itself. And they believe that in a way the consciousness of all beings should be served, the consciousness of all beings should be improved. You find this concept very strongly, for instance, in uh, Mahayana Buddhism, where out of compassion we reincarnate until all beings are enlightened. And these spirits, they uh, also have a hierarchy, so they also listen to the angels which uh, separated from the humility angels who are just following the will of God, and they start to follow their own idea of compassion, of goodness, of how to help all other beings. And uh, finally, we have uh, beings which see themselves as leaders, so who put themselves a little bit more into a uh, responsibility role. Um, they uh, look at themselves and they see I have a certain level of consciousness and there are beings which have a lower level of consciousness and therefore I can lead them or I can inspire them. And by doing this I become a better leader and by becoming a better leader in a way also my consciousness will improve. And these are, in a way, angels of dominance, of leadership. And if we look a little bit at like what type of spirits are predominant on yeah, our local planet, then we find that the angels of self-improvement, of luciferical forces, they're at the moment the dominant force on the planet. On, well, at least in humanity, let's put it this way. And the second largest group are the uh, spirits of harmony and well the spirits who humbly want to follow the divine are well unfortunately the smallest group and the second uh, as, yeah almost the smallest group are the angels of dominance well if we look at um, our power structures on earth we get a very different view of course because different angels are attracted to different things. Those who want to follow God are usually not interested so much in material development, but rather in spiritual development. So they're often a little bit on the background because they're busy with themselves and their own spirit and what God desires from them. And um, this, the opposite is true of the spirits who want to be in a dominant in a leadership position. 
There's relatively few of them, but because they are very attracted to power, to positions of leadership, we find that most of our politicians, um, big corporations, are led by people who have such a type of spirit or such a type of inspiration. Um, the spirits who are looking for harmony used to be a majority on this planet when we were still living in shamanic, um, yeah, nature-oriented religions. But we have chosen for technology, for philosophy, for thought, uh, which are basically self-development tools. So the amount of spirits who believe in harmony has decreased because many of them have moved to a different solar system to have a more fulfilling incarnation. So the most important thing for you is to recognize uh, what type of spirit am I and what type of angel, what type of messenger should I be listening to? So there's basically four types of angel, four types of being which separated from the divinity to bring us a certain message, to lead us on a certain path of self-development. And now we come to another tricky thing. It is namely that on higher levels um, there is a great plasticity. So here if I want to do something I will have to pick it up and use my tools and slowly work something into something else. On the higher levels of consciousness we are all creators. If we imagine something, if we want something, if we dream something up, it is there, it exists. So as a spirit I can just imagine myself, well, I have this beautiful white, an uh, white angel wings and they will exist. I can imagine, well, I have this beautiful golden aura and it will be there. So it is very, very easy for any spirit, any spirit whatsoever, to manifest itself as our archetypal angel. So appearances mean nothing if we come into sensing an angel. So many people see beings of light, beings with golden wings or fiery wings. It doesn't mean they are angels at all. So sorry to disappoint. It is already a beautiful thing that you are experiencing spirits, so don't be too unhappy about it. Um, but often you will find that um, most of these spirits will have their own personality, will have emotions and will have other attributes which make them seem very human to us if you get close into contact with them. And of course they may be very wise humans and they may be very benevolent and they generally are and trying to help us. So it is a good thing to listen to them and a good thing to respect them. So I'm not saying, saying throw angels overboard or anything or any contact with the spiritual because it's a ladder. And by our contact with what we think are angels, but maybe are not, by this contact we are enriched, we are inspired. Slowly our consciousness increases and eventually we will pass up through the various layers, get into contact with spirits on a larger scale who care about communities, about the planet, uh, about principles, ultimately reach a state of enlightenment and after that get into contact with real angels or even become a real angel yourself. Another reason that angels tend not to manifest is also because their servants need to learn. So the ones who carry the messages from the angels are not infallible, but by their mistakes, by our mistakes, we learn. And if the angel would say, well, I know how to do everything perfectly, I will do it all myself, of course this is possible. God can take over the universe and arrange everything according to his will. But this is not the purpose of life. It is not that we need to be dominated by God. We need to be free. We need to have our own free will. We need to have our own development. And ultimately if we have perfected all other lower levels, if we have perfected our attachments, if we have perfected our desires, um, if we have perfected our ego, if we have perfected our thoughts, um, then we can remain in higher levels of awareness without the threat of falling down. 
and it is basically our imperfections within our desire uh, which caused us to come here into this manifested world. And once these desires are all fulfilled, there is no reason for us to go back down into the manifested world. So this process of spiritual growth is in a way to protect us when we do finally become angels again from falling down into the manifestation again. So it's rather like, okay, well, we're down here in the class to work on ourselves. And to work on ourselves means that we have to inex to experience our imperfections, to be able to work on them. And the divine guidance is there to help us in various ways to manifest ourselves, to perfect ourselves, to improve ourselves. And we all have a different road to self-improvement. It's not always true that we have only one road, because we are in a society where all these different angelic rays, the four rays of humility or, uh, or leadership, individuality, individual growth or communal growth in harmony, uh, they exist. But it is very important for you to recognize what path is nurturing your spirit. Because if your spirit is following a different path, then the instructions from another path are not going to apply to you. They're not going to be very helpful for you because you have a different way of growing, of transforming different things which need to be perfected in you. Another way to find out if you are having doubts, if an angel is an angel of God, is to ask it to pray and to see what results it will generate. Uh, another way if spirit is inhabiting your body to check if the spirit is okay is to try to pray yourself and see if you can indeed pray very clearly and feel the effects of the prayer because a prayer if you do it correctly is also an invitation to the Holy Spirit to come into you into your life to manifest the will of God and if you have indeed a true angel or an angel who is indeed in the line of obeying to God, they will be quite happy to pray, to pray for the Holy Spirit to come in to guide them. But for all the other three types of angels, uh, the angels of self-development, communal development and uh, leadership, they have their own guidance system, they have their own willpower, which is driving them uh, on their journey uh, in our cosmos and generally they're very unwilling to let go of their driving force because if they did not want to follow their driving force why separate from the humility ray of angels so the prayer you can do is a very simple one so first you need to acknowledge um, a connection with a higher being who can invite the Holy Spirit in. And it doesn't really matter whether you're a Christian or a Muslim or in a shamanic tradition, um, because it's called in different names, whether you call it yeah, Great Spirit or the Holy Ghost or uh, the Feminine Cosmos. Um, there is a spirit there who is there to guide us and this is what we are applying to and we usually do this through an intermediary because our own energies are not pure enough or not clear enough in general to invite such a high being to come into our being so it comes into us because of the compassion there is the desire of the holy spirit to help all beings but we are not in a position to demand its presence we are only in a position to ask a higher being to well relay this request so through a saint or in my case through jesus christ so i will now do the prayer jesus christ my lord and savior i pray to you my master and hope that you will grant me the blessing of the Holy Spirit so that his will and not my will may be done 
so that neither my emotions, nor my thoughts, nor my desires will cloud the will of God, that I may be his instrument, and that all I am and do will be according to his will. I now surrender all I am and all I ever will be and was to his domination and I humbly accept the honour if you would be willing to bestow it on me. And as the prayer is answered, I have a feeling of all the tensions in my heart uh, disappearing, about a great calmness comes into my mind, and a piece of serenity, of peace. And I notice that all my own inner anxieties and troubles are removed or suppressed by the presence of the Holy Spirit. And if you ask a spirit to utter the same prayer, you should notice a similar change coming over it, if it is indeed a spirit of God, of the humility ray. Um, as I said, there are also other angels, angels of harmony, which I personally work with a lot since I really enjoy the nature traditions. And also spirits of leadership and dominance, and spirits of individuality and duality, self-development. And they also have their own principles which they follow. Um, but, well, I do not follow their paths, so I will not uh, pray to them. I hope this has been uh, helpful for you in uh, dealing with spirits and finding out whether they're angels or not. And I wish you good luck on your journey towards the light. Love and light. Namaste.